Now I said in my last Doctor Who video that I was done talking about Doctor Who, at least done talking about Doctor Who until the new Shurigawa season starts in May or so, because, I mean, what more could there be to talk about? We've already talked about the awful 60th anniversary specials, we've talked about the ratings for the Christmas special and how people weren't watching it, I figured, look, that's gonna be the end, and I wasn't lying, I truly thought that was the case, and that's not to talk about all the Whovians that were in my comments on so much copium that I got a contact high just from reading them. And then my boy Will of the Fans, who you guys may know and watch from Saturday Night Hypnosis as well as his own glorious channel, sent me an article, and it was so glorious, I, I couldn't help myself, we gotta talk about this. So welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host Leon Idol, and I guess I'm not quite off the making fun of Doctor Who train yet, because, uh, yeah, Doctor Who streamed over 10 million times over a festive period, reveals BBC. That sounds good, that sounds like an excellent number. Let me tell you, there's a little bit more to it. There's some caveats here. So before we get into this article, hit that subscribe button because we're wanting to grow a massive amount in 2024. 2023 was our first year. It was an explosive year, and now we want to take it even further. So let's show these fake Doctor Who fans of this modern era of Doctor Who that we mean business. Hit that button, and we'll get into this. The BBC have revealed that iPlayer set a new record for the number of streams made over the festive period in 2023, including over 10 million streams for Doctor Who episodes. And, you know, again, on the surface, that sounds good. That's sounds like, yeah, 10 million views over the Christmas season? Man, who, who could ask for more? And of course, they've got Shurigawa here, his nail-painted doctor right on the front cover, except... That's not exactly the Doctor Who that folks were watching. The week saw programs streamed a record-breaking 177 million times, up 7% uh, on the same time the year before, and beating the previous record, to, uh, you know, 2-8 uh, January 23rd, when 173 million programs were streamed in a week. EastEnders was also in the top title on iPlayer at 26.28 million streams for the festive fortnight vigil, and ba basically it goes on to show a, a bunch of different TV shows. Now, Doctor Who, from 2005, onwards. Now, that's going to be very important when we talk about this. From 2005 onwards. Now, now think about 2005 Doctor Who. That's when individuals were getting back into it. That was the revival. 2005, and then you go into the David Tennant era right after that, the Matt Smith, when everyone and their grandmother was jumping on that Doctor Who bandwagon. I mean, I've said it before, you couldn't walk into a Hot Topic without being vomited on by TARDIS merchandise. It was actually unbearable. I, even for Doctor Who fans, I feel like it had to be terrible. You know, have you ever enjoyed something, loved it your whole life, then out of the blue, it blows up, and people just are fake obsessed over it? That happened with me in Supernatural, you know? I have to used to live in fear of Supernatural being cancelled for literal years because the woman that ran the CW loathed the show and so they never promoted it. And then, out of the blue, once it hits Netflix, people are just glowing on Supernatural. I think it's the greatest thing ever when people like me who've been watching since season one, you know, we weren't getting our respect. We couldn't just go into Hot Topics and buy t-shirts. We had to order direct from the website. But at the end of the day, it's also nice to see new individuals get into your franchise. I don't want to be one of those, you know, hardcore hipsters about Supernatural. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't want to be like that for Doctor Who. So you love seeing the franchise blow up. Unless you're seeing what's happening with it now, because you're obviously seeing Doctor Who go into a downward trajectory. A lot of individuals I know that have been hardcore fans of the show for years were immediately turned off by the Jodie Whittaker stuff, because, well, why wouldn't they be? And the Shooty Gatwa stuff doesn't seem much better. Although, to be fair, I will also acknowledge that even the detractors of the Shooty Gatwa stuff did say some positive things, minimal, but still some, about the Christmas special. But we're not going to get into their opinions on it. I just want you to remember, from 2005 onwards, when Doctor Who was at its peak, before all this modern audience shenanigans. So the top five streamed episodes on iPlayer over Christmas. You got EastEnders number one, Vigil number two. You got Doctor Who all the way down at number five. Now, 1.79, that's the church on Ruby Road. Hmm, okay. Christmas special, 1.79 million views on this particular app. All right, that's, I guess, not bad. Wait, what's this at number three? Rick, Rick Astley, New Year? At two million views? Like... Wait a moment, you're telling me that the never gonna give you up guy who was irrelevant for 20 years until 15 years ago, Family Guy brought him back and made him relevant again as a meme? The never gonna give you up Rickroll meme got more views than the Doctor Who Christmas special starring your brand new glorious race swap doctor? Okay, maybe Doctor Who ain't doing quite as great as we thought. I mean, if, if you'd have asked me in 2005 what's gonna make more views, you know, Rick Astley or Doctor Who, the majority of individuals would ask the same question. Who is Rick Astley? Like, like, he's more of a Doctor Who than 
actual Doctor Who, because no one remembered who Rick Hasley was. He was a one-hit wonder from, like, what, 86 or something? But it gets better than that. Top 5 stream program brands on iPlayer over Christmas. And now this is the show as a whole, not just episode, but the program brands. Doctor Who, 2005 to onward. So people are not watching the new Shurigatwa Doctor Who stuff. Again, we see 1 million, sorry, um, oh, we'll be generous and estimate, almost 2 million views. But that's out of 10 million for the entire series, for the entire show from 2005 onward. So 80 or 8 million of these views are people watching the old Doctor Who. Clearly there's still love for the franchise, but there's love for the franchise from when it was good. I mean, if you were to tell me, look, Doctor Who got 10 million views, maybe i look back and be like, okay, maybe I've been too hard on the show. Maybe it does actually have more fans out there than I gave it credit for. Maybe I'm going too hard in the paint. All this culture war nonsense is going to my head. Because let's be real, that does happen from time to time. You get individuals who are so invested in the culture war, that they lose track of what's really important. They lose sight of the grand scheme of things, which is we want our culture and our content within that culture to be better. We want to be able to be nerds and talk about nerd stuff around the water cooler without having to default to agendas and race baiting and race swapping and talking about politics, this, that, and the other. And you know what? If, if Doctor Who got 10 million views, then maybe Doctor Who, this new version, is actually being well-received by fans. It wouldn't be the first time that shows have bounced back. Stranger Things did it. Most people couldn't stand Season 3. Then Season 4 brought it back on track. What about Star Trek Picard? Any real Star Trek fan loathed, and I mean loathed, Picard Season 1 and 2, but then Season 3 comes out, and all of a sudden Trekkies are back in full force because it really was like old Trek again to them. So maybe Doctor Who did that. And then you look at the numbers and realize, oh no, people are just, they're watching the old stuff. They're going back and they're reliving their glory days. I mean, it would be the, the exact same as if, you know, Disney brought out a bunch of new Star Wars stuff, which they're always doing. And then we see voraciously high viewing numbers for Star Wars as a brand. But then you look at, you know, the, the sequel trilogy and see those views themselves are down really low. So all the other views were coming from the prequels and the sequels. All of a sudden, it starts to paint the picture. Yeah, I guess people still don't like the sequels. They're just not willing to give up the classics they love, the prequels and, and the original trilogy. So Dan McGulpin, director of the BBC iPlayer and Channel, says, It's wonderful to see the viewers came to the BBC iPlayer in record numbers over the festive period. Nowhere else would they have found the same range of high-quality British programming to keep them gripped. I mean... What is more high quality than the Rickroll guy on his New Year's Eve special? By the way, it said only part one. So for those of you that were truly interested, there is going to be, or maybe by the time this video has come out, it's already released a part two of Rick Astley's Christmas. But by the way, just real, I know I've been dogging on Rick Astley a lot. This is a quick tangent, quick side note. He's actually a really good musician. I don't know if you guys listening have, have watched or heard any of his other music besides Never Gonna Give You Up. He does a really decent cover of Everlong by the Foo Fighters. So check that out. Just I, I've been throwing shade at the guy because it's very easy to do. He is, you know, he's a meme. Family Guy turned him into a meme, but he's actually not a talentless musician. He released an album like a year ago. I, I listened to it all the way through. It's on Spotify. Not a bad album. So, Rick, uh, sorry, but you're helping me prove my point with your you know, existence as a meme, but I do like your tunes. Uh, with a whole host of compelling drama, comedy, factual programming. Now, I wonder what they're considering factual programming, because remember, in Doctor Who, they apparently have trans children. Well, but it's factual. There's no such thing as a trans child because children can't consent. So I don't know what they mean about factual programming. We, we might want to get a fact check on that. Entertainment and sport landing on iPlayer in 2024. Viewers can look forward to a great year ahead. Can they though? I just love the fact that this was framed around the holiday season, the festive season as they're calling this. In, in my head, I see like this British father and his young son, they're experiencing the holidays together. It's like, oh son, what did you think of your new cricket bat for Christmas there? And he's like, oh, I loved it daddy. Excellent. Now, how about we sit around the telly and watch Doctor Who? Not the Jodie Whittaker stuff, right, pups? Oh, of course not. I'm talking about Doctor Who, not Doctor Who gives a shit. Like, that's how I imagine the discussions in a prim, proper British family are going on right now. But hey, what am I, who am I to judge? As I've said before in plenty of my other videos, I don't like Doctor Who. I've never liked Doctor Who. I don't really care if Doctor Who fails on a personal level. But, 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 don't turn up the video yet just because I'm sort of, you know, Whovian hater. I do want to see Doctor Who succeed. I want to see Doctor Who get good again because, as mentioned before, I love nerd culture in general. And just because Doctor Who doesn't speak to me doesn't mean there aren't legions of nerds out there that Doctor Who truly was the end-all be-all of their nerdy loves. You know, it might be their Star Wars, it might be their Pokemon, it might be their Dragon Ball Z. And as someone who has seen so many of my nerdy loves go down the drain, 
Yeah, I do not wish that on anybody. As a Star Wars fan, I grew up in the era where you picked a side. You were Star Wars or Star Trek, and let me tell you, I've said some pretty heinous things to some Star Trek fans over the course of my nerd culture fighting life. I mean, if you guys think that I'm racist or transphobic with some of my rhetoric, you should wait until you uh, hear what I have to say to a Trekkie, because it makes my transphobia seem tame. Uh, but no, in all reality, I don't want to see Star Trek destroyed. I don't want to see any of these nerd franchises destroyed, because... Other nerds should get to, you know, grow up and foster and have these nerdy loves and talk about them in a completely normal and reasonable manner without the injection of politics, you know, identitarian politics or any sort of agendas, you know, social, political, or otherwise, and that's not where we're at. Regardless of whether you want to believe it or not, Jodie Whittaker was cast because she was a woman. Should have got what was cast because he was black. Dude might be a good actor. I'm not knocking that. He might be an incredibly talented performer. But if he was just as equally talented but was a white dude, yeah, he wasn't getting that role. And you know what? That's not exactly... Yeah, that, that's incredibly unfortunate for people that want to see an agenda-free Doctor Who that just cares about storytelling and cares about keeping the legacy of this long-running fan-favorite show going. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below or let me know on X where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Not always about Doctor Who. Like I said, I thought I was done talking about it. And until further notice, to my knowledge, I am. But big shout-out to Will of the Fans for sending me this. Anyway, not always about Doctor Who, but uh, anime, movies, music, Music, Magic the Gathering, you name it. Check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon. And remember, it's all here in the Nerdosphere. And this has been Words of Paradise.